for uh, coming in today. This is super exciting. Uh, you know, uh, one of the let me just tell you a little bit about myself super quick. Why am I here? Why am I keeping away, keeping you away from your delicious lunch, you know, and hanging out with your friends? Uh, my name is Hassan Habib. I am a senior engineering manager in the mixed reality HoloLens. And uh, I've been at Microsoft now for about, you know, almost six years. Uh, I've been in the tech industry for 22. Um, I am super passionate about technology in general and how you can connect to people and then connect people to technology and then create amazing solutions. You know, that kind of makes them happy, brings prosperity and happiness to them. And it just so happens that a, a big customer of mine is also the engineers themselves. Like I like to enhance the engineering experience in and of itself. I like to always seek uh, different technologies and different capabilities that can make your life easier, right? Especially if you're trying to build something super important, you don't need that extra, you know, uh, overhead of uh, complication, and you you don't need to find with the te to fight with the technology or the framework that you're working with and uh one of the technologies that i am super super passionate about is a technology called blazer blazer is a you know homegrown organic technology that was built here at microsoft uh, the idea of blazer is to basically allow people to write uh, C sharp in the browser. So you basically be able to go and say, I want to build an end to end system. I have a database and I have an API that exposes a bunch of endpoints that allows me to interact with this database. I also want to go build the front end. Historically speaking, what people used to do is that, you know, they, they had two different routes when they were building systems like this. Let me see if I can share my screen here. What people used to do is that they would go and say, okay, I have this situation here. Uh, I have a tiny API and here is a little database sitting in front of that API like this. And I want to go and build a, a user interface for it. So I'm going to go and build this user interface here in its own component. And, you know, historically speaking, even today, you know, if you look at Azure and a lot of the systems that are built today, you know, it has a lot of, you know, React, you know, JS, you're going to have a lot of Angular, you know, and a lot of TypeScript and so many other things that, you know, backend engineers, which basically constitute the majority of engineers inside and outside of Microsoft, like a Stack Overflow survey, you know, kind of produced some uh, stats about, you know, the questions that come in and, you know, the conversations that are happening. And, you know, over 49% of the questions and the engineers that are working or asking questions on Stack Overflow are backend engineers. And only 21 or 20, 23, 21 or 23 percent are front end, right? So there's a big customer base here. There's a whole bunch of people that like to write back end systems and C -sharp .net, you know, and they want to be able to kind of, you know, tap into this, you know, UI world, but it's always been kind of confusing to them. You know, JavaScript is weird. You know, I don't know how to, you know, what is this callback thing? You know, do we use vanilla JavaScript or do we go back to React or do we use TypeScript? And, you know, so many of these questions are happening in that particular world. So a, an amazing engineer, a principal engineer here at Microsoft, his name is Steve Sanderson. He basically went in and said, why don't we just write C sharp here? You know, so we have the people that build back end systems also able to build front end systems. And then he came up with this idea of Blazor, right? Uh, don't ask me what it means because, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, what the B stands for. He said Bitcoin because it, it doesn't really mean anything, right? It's supposed to be, you know, Razor for the browser. But what is the B? you know, nobody really, really knows because Razor has always been running in the browser. So I want to show you here like a quick example of how you can do something like this. This is, it's just really as simple as going and saying, let's go here and share this screen. So I have a, 40, not to brag, I have 49 inch screen. So I'm going to be kind of sharing and unsharing because if I share the whole thing with you, you're not going to be able to see anything. So here is the, uh, the start start a project in here just a moment i know you can't see that one here we go and and way too many screens open so i can't even tell here you should be able to see visual studio now i think and and let me know if it's too small or not clear enough you know so i can kind of adjust that can you guys see the text okay or the side menu okay okay that's perfect. good 
Okay, perfect. Where where do you start? You know, you know, you basically go and just say I want to create a new project, and I'm assuming is this window visible to you? The the select a new project window. Can you guys see that one, or is it its own thread? You know. Yes, that works. We see it. Okay, okay. So you select a Blazor uh, server app, and you just create a new Blazor app. It's basically Blazor has server side and client side. You just create one of them, and it basically this is really just the basic template right and the template as is if you just run the template like this it'll kind of uh, pop up a web application a demo web application that has all these kind of stuff this if you, if you do that today you're going to get all these uh, nice kind of uh, side menu buttons and all that kind of stuff just to show you what the what the technology is capable of right so if you if you go build your blazer application like this it'll give you a bunch of nice things oh look we can fetch data and we can do this but that's exactly the same thing that you know uh, Razor you know used to have. There's there isn't much different in here. So what I'm going to try to do is that is just to show you a simple example of me creating a simple control. So I'm just going to create a, a very simple button in here, like this, right? And in that button, I want to go and say, okay, let's say let's say the button says click me, like this. And then I want, when I click that button, I want to be able to go and say, display something in that label, like hello one ES or something like that, right? Historically speaking, you would go and say, well, then I need to do something like script and 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 type some JavaScript and find the button by ID. And then, you know, when the button is clicked, call this function and find the label by ID and do all that kind of stuff. You don't have to do that anymore. You can actually use your existing C sharp coding skills to be able to go and actually render whatever you want to do. You can do it in two ways. You can put code behind this razor page so you can basically go and say here's a page i'm going to go and create a very simple uh, c sharp file that matches the name of of the razor file that i have so i'm working with index razor i could just go like this and say index.razor.cs and it will nest right behind that file see so there's this file for the code and then there's this file here for the for the HTML, which is my personal kind of favorite style of doing these things, because that basically means you have kind of unobtrusiveness, you have separation, you know, you don't you don't have to kind of, you know, uh, confuse the engineers that are working with the system, whether they switch from from uh, markup HTML all the way back to C sharp and whatnot. You will notice that this guy is kind of erroring out because I created a class that's sitting behind the class, so I need to partialize it. OK, I'll come back to that one in a second. But just to keep things simple, let's say you're just doing a demo like this and you just want to show people the capabilities of uh, Blazor. You could just go and do add code like this. And now you can write C sharp code here just the same way you're writing in a CS file, just like that. OK, <clears throat> so so what that basically means, I think this guy can be a proper out, oh, something like that. OK, so I want when I click on that button, I want to update this label with something with some message, right? So maybe I need a function in here. So here's a little function. I'm going to say public void uh, on click like this. And in this function, I want to update a label. So I'm going to create a property in here. Doesn't look like the complete. Yeah, there you go. And I'm going to say this is my label. Right. I want to go here and say when that button is clicked, go ahead and update this label to say hello one es just something as simple as this okay so this is all c sharp i can take this function in here and i can go now on the button itself and say on click and just call this function the on click function that i just created okay and i need to take that label that i just updated and i just put it in here and i need to make sure that it's kind of reference so it knows the difference between oh this is you know markup just text that you want to put in there versus you know a uh, just just raw text that you want to that you want to render on the screen right so you have the html sitting here and then you have the code sitting here i can take that exact same code and put it in the back end file in here just as is let's run this and see what it ha what happens what it does <clears throat> There we go. Let's switch the screen again real quick. Here we go. And here's the button and I click the button and boom, it shows the message just like that. Believe it or not, you can with this technology write super modern interactive uh, systems end to end without writing one line of code of JavaScript. 
right? The beautiful thing about Blazor today is that it has an amazing, huge community behind it and a whole bunch of uh, tools and libraries that allows you to test drive Blazor components, you know, however you want. And I'm going to show you some examples of this from the work that I'm actually doing on a daily basis here at Mixed Reality that kind of, you know, simplifies the process for you. You just want something to show up on the screen. You want to be able to, c to control it. You want to send asynchronous, you know, kind of calls to a, to an API or whatever you want to do with it. It's all possible. I'll take a second here and see if anyone has a question before I jump into the next to the next step. Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, just a, a quick one. You mentioned um, there's a big community around uh, and lots of libraries and stuff. Um, are you also able to use like existing libraries that target .NET, or are there any limitations there? Oh, uh, for .NET, you can use any library you want. You can use existing any existing library you want, as long as so. There is a caveat to it. There is Blazor has server side and client side. For the most part, server side, you can use any library you you want. All your existing libraries, no problem there. For client side, it just has one little limitation with the HTTP calls, which we already have a library that takes care of it. So everything else should be should be functional just as is. Okay, thanks. All right. Any more questions? So you know, while just just a quick thing, and then I'll go back to to taking a second for for the questions. Uh, something I was playing with before this uh, demo, I'm not going to pretend I have that off the top of my head, so I'm going to put it in here. And this is basically an example for you to kind of see uh, a a task, your your existing task awaits. You're doing a delay. This is all your existing C sharp kind of stuff. And I can basically take that intro text and put it in here. And I don't need this guy anymore because I I already load the screen right away. And just like that, you basically have a text and you have an intro text and this intro text, you know, renders on the label. And I'm basically saying iterate. And every time you iterate, go ahead and wait, put a delay of 50 milliseconds and then call call the same function again over and over. It's basically a recursive function. I, I promise you I'm not showing off with, with recursion and all that kind of stuff. And it's probably kind of rare when you start using it. Depends, it depends on what you're doing, but it just made sense in this particular context. See, if I write this code this way, this is basically what I get. Watch this. You get this. See, this is all native C sharp. There's nothing you get to kind of render the screen and refresh the page without having to, you know, do anything. The problem with Razor, which is a predecessor of Blazor, was that you had to kind of refresh the page. You couldn't build modern web applications. You had to go to different routes and whatnot. And if you needed to do something specific, you needed to, you know, call JavaScript. Now you don't have to do any of that. Now it's super straightforward. You can do whatever you want, you know, all in C sharp. So much so that some of the applications that are already living and breathing here at Microsoft are all built natively from the ground up without one line of code in in JavaScript. And I'm going to show you some of these, you know, in a bit, but uh, I'll go back to kind of taking a second and see if anyone has any questions about any of that. I'll even show you the code just in case you want to ask something about that. Questions? All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, is this actually just a fun, you know, new technology that we just can can play around with? But when things get serious and we want to build, a, you know, serious end-to-end -end enterprise systems, are we going to run into uh, roadblocks and stuff like that? Or can you actually use that today? Actually, this this new team I just joined this team about five months ago, and uh, we do actually something. It seems like a whole lot like what uh, one engineering solution does. At least some part of you guys, you know, you manage the agents and the uh, VMs and you want, you know, a pipeline to be set up. And when people push, you know, code, you want to run, you know, the testing and the building and pulling in the dependencies and all that kind of stuff. Something very similar that we're playing around here uh, with. And actually, there's, there's a lot of communications between our orgs uh, in that matter, which is, uh, the uh, in mixed reality, we have a bunch of uh, labs, and these labs are sitting behind 
uh, services that that allows people to develop systems. So let's assume assume you have a VR device or a mixed reality device, right? And you have a pipeline sitting in here, right? Uh, what my team and I have been working on is to basically build the intelligence here between these two things, where the pipeline kicks off a build or a test, the test lands in the lab to test the, the VR or AR whole lens device, and then you basically pull the results back and show it show it on the pipeline, right? There's still, of course, a lot of design and work. This is like a, a really baby project that we're still, you know, kind of uh, working on, but uh, it, it, the project in its entirety you know, from the ground up is built in uh, in Blazor. And here is a kind of a bizarro version, like a demo that kind of shows you real time data of how we pull in uh, these details. So let me show you here real quick. Here is a. Is an example of our portal. Here you go. So this goes and pulls real time data. You know, we have a, a a HoloLens device attached to a phone, attached to a Nook. I wanna know the battery levels on these devices. I wanna know what kind of commands and tests ran on each and every one of these devices. This entire project was written with zero lines of JavaScript. We didn't use JavaScript in any of this, right? It's all test driven, it all has the components of it. The beautiful thing about this is that for people who have never worked with Blazor or people who have never worked with front end at all, you know, a, their testimony is that it has been simple and easy. We could actually learn it so easily and work with it because it's very similar to the back end work that we're doing. Uh, I brought with me here uh, someone on my team, Gitika Jane, to talk a little bit about her experience and how she, you know, kind of learned Blazor and how that worked out. By the way, this project is open source. So if you go into uh, GitHub, you can find, I'm sending you the link right now, you can actually see our entire code base sitting in here. I'm going to send it here in the chat. You can see all the tests and all the work that we're doing to kind of, you know, make something like that work. Gitika, do you want to talk a little bit about about uh, uh, Blazor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Gitika, working with Hassan since like six months and totally loving it. Uh, so when we started this project, uh, it was an end-to-end project. -end, uh, starting from web portal to our core APIs. Um, and it was a really fun journey. Uh, building something from ground up is just beautiful. Um, I was initially working with uh, something similar uh, using React and I won't, uh, I won't lie, it was a little bit intimidating. Uh, but when I guess we started with building portal, and we kind of like used Blazor and Hassan kind of showed us around um, how exactly uh, we're supposed to do it. I think it was as easy, I mean, as easy as writing a base CS class. And it was like, uh, it just came so naturally. It was nothing out of the box. You didn't have to like remember or memorize anything differently. It's just like create a UI component and then just create its all the logic goes to its base class and then you can just control and handle all the, um, I mean, even if the size of that component, like a UI component increases, like if you have multiple UI components in one, you can still pretty cleanly handle the logic behind it. So, I mean, it just makes it less chaotic and very easy to understand and onboard on. So. It was just great, like, and very yeah. easy. Yeah. Speaking uh, speaking of testing, some of the things that my team and I kind of came up with, you know, we looked around a lot about how to test styles, right? And uh, we ended up with an idea where we can actually represent a style on a component as a simple C sharp object. And now we can test that C, C sharp object. So if you look at a, a, the, our tests in here, you can see how we basically picked up a component and say, I don't know, let's let's pick up a device overview component. And then if I if I go down here, you will see that we're presenting, we are presenting our uh, objects. I think it's in let's see, lab overviews. These are all, yeah, there you go. So look, your object is basically a C-sharp class. And all you have to do to test it is to just go and say, 
is the object that's injected into my C my uh, Blazor component, does it match these properties, right? So if something as small as a change of a color on a button or a size or anything like that happens, we catch that immediately in a very simple way, something that people can just pick up and run with. It would take you like a couple of days to kind of pick up Blazor and run with it. But the other thing that's really important, you know, and you'll see this in every repository that I put in here, there's a standard, there's a philosophy that the team follows, right? This is what we were talking about earlier when we started this conversation. There's a philosophy that the team follows that kind of governs how we can break down these components. I'm going to put the link, by the way, you know, you know, the standard itself is open source. You know, you can certainly, you know, go see it in here, but I wanted to kind of just scroll down to the part that really uh, matters, I mean, for, for this particular session, which is uh, the user interfaces. If you look at the web application, how we structure them, we broke down our web applications, you know, and its integration into particular components that truly actually implement single responsibility. So we have brokers and services and view services. This is the data flow. And then we broke our UI into pages and components and base components. So now you have this mental map of where the code is supposed to live, what's testable at the unit level, what's testable at the integration level. This could be its own session just to talk about these pieces, but certainly please take a look there and see the philosophy that kind of governs because technology in and of itself, no matter how simple it is, is not going to make your code simple. You're going to have to intentionally, systematically, kind of proactively kind of implement this and bake this into the system that you're building. No matter what the technology is that you're using, you still need something in there that makes it cohesive, that makes it easy for people to kind of hit the ground running, you know, from day one uh, based on particular principles and guidelines and all that. Okay, that's my spiel. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all? Yeah, okay. I, I've got another question um, about kind of the difference between uh, Blazor Server and Blazor Wasm. Is that? Yeah, Wasm client side. Uh, yes. Client yes. side. Yeah. Um, so is is the uh, UI that you constructed is that uh, server side or yeah, the, client? Yeah, the demo that I just showed that's server side. You know, but it can very easily be changed into client side, which is very minor details. The, the 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 point of it, just just for the people in the in the chat as well, the client side basically says let every let the entire app, you know, load on the on the in the browser, right? And you're doing only the the API communications. In the server side, the app is actually rendering on the server and then getting served to the client. So just two different kind of. Uh, mindsets in terms of rendering rendering your your application, but between server side and client side, the the difference is not really that big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is is the only reason you would go for one of the other then um, for I guess simplicity sake, if you had like a database involved or you had some authentication, um, it sounds like the server side makes everything a lot simpler in terms of uh, everything stays on the server. You don't need to worry about uh, sending stuff over the wire. But yep. if you had like a client side model, you would still need to have some sort of like ASP Netcore um, web API to handle all of that. You, you don't. You can actually have a node sitting in the back end and your front end is Blazor and you can still call the API just the same way you implement API integration anywhere. And you can do the opposite too, right? Like you can have your back end API written in C sharp and a, you know, a React front end to talk to it, right? But then that would fall away from the topic of this of this chat. But but yeah, mm -hmm. I, ideally it depends on the business scenario too. Like if you expect your customer to be sitting too long in front of the screen, editing files and documents and all that, you do want to keep the connection to the server. You want to serve the entire app on their side, even if they lose internet connection and then they come back up, you basically serve the data back to the API. Also client side helps a lot with scale, right? Like if you do all the work on the server, if you have like a couple of, a couple of billion users visiting your, your website, it becomes a little bit too much work for your server to do uh, rather than just having a CDN serve, you know, the the client and then based on the user authentication token, you're basically sending it back to the API to kind of get that information. It makes things a little bit, uh, a lot more simpler. Okay, yeah, thanks. And then that, that, that goes, like you said, a little bit beyond the, the scope of this. Yep. 
but there is something within that scope though that's that's super important if you build your application today in blazor you can turn it easily into a desktop or a mobile application so some of you might have heard of maui right maui is basically the idea of you building a, a ui components for the web and then they render natively on uh, the uh, on the on the on the mobile mobile side. So if you you're building a mobile app, your existing components you can still reuse them. They're all C sharp, no problem there. Uh, highly recommend taking a look at Maui.net. A uh, huge huge investment there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of push towards being able to build your UI components once and then run them everywhere. So you want to run it on iOS or Android or Mac OS or Windows, whatever you want to run it on it'll just work just fine, right? So that's basically uh, the idea behind that. Like your investment in these components uh, will be, you know, will be super, super uh, beneficial because you, you won't have to go rethink and rebuild these components, you know, and if, if for a different platform or a different language. We see here is the user base for Blazor entirely C sharp people who don't know or want to use JavaScript or there are reasons to use it as well. I mean, you know, the the .NET team is trying to compete for performance now. They want to give you a higher performance, you know, than what you would use with a different framework, right? There's a lot of comparisons there between, uh, let's see here, uh, let's see, Blazor versus React. Uh, performance. I I saw something the other day. It's it's basically WebAssembly based. There's there's some work there that we still have to do, you know, to kind of hit the right performance points. Um, I think it was on Medium, not this one. This I haven't seen this one before, but it could be. It may as well be a little bit less performant. But there's always um, there's always this. I want to give you a little bit more than just a oh, I don't like JavaScript, JavaScript is so yucky, I want to use a different technology. There's a little bit more to it. We, we you know, Daniel Ross, Steve Sanderson, these folks, .NET, the DevDev Dev team, they're basically trying to compete now for a little bit more than that, higher performance, easier use, stuff like that. It's also, to, to be honest with you, though, from an engineering experience, let's just like I mentioned earlier, if you're, if you're a software engineer with back-end experience and you want to jump into the UI world, you know, you want to take the least resistant path, right? You don't want to think about, oh, what libraries do I need to use for testing? Because JavaScript, there's tons and tons of libraries, millions of libraries out there, you know, that can do uh, the pretty much the exact same thing. But with uh, Blazor, there is a little bit more uh, specificity, you know, specificity for, for, the, for the work that you're doing and the libraries that you're using and the tools that you're trying to integrate with. What's the render speed like? Emily Bencourt, what's the render speed like? Client versus server side. Client client is slower at the beginning, but then faster forever because it takes the time to load the entire app on the browser. And then from now onwards, you're just sending back and forth just JSON objects and all that. Uh, server side, you know, fast in the beginning, but it gets slower the more you interact with the server and stuff like that. So it all depends on trying to make sure that your application is kind of one component and simple per page or per route. So you don't have to put too much stuff if you're doing it on the server side to keep it simple. You know, even from accessibility standpoint and usability standpoint, you want to keep it simple. You want to keep it just, you know, a handful of components before you actually go in and uh, and move on to a next flow or a next business business scenario. I appreciate the note about, you know, using the same code with that. Yeah, both front end, back end, the same thing that node JS has been trying to do, right? Build your back end in Node.js and build the same thing in the front end. It's all about the developer and the engineer and their experience and all that. Absolutely 100%. Okay. Any more questions? Anything at all? <laughs> yeah, if not, I'm sure uh, we can ask people to reach out to you with any, any follow up questions. Yep, always reach out. More than happy. There's a, a Blazor community that I'm going to send the link to. And, you know, thank you guys for inviting me today. This has been fun. I know it's just a little bit of a shorter time, but, uh, you know, explore these links. Uh, there's a 50, 
I think, sorry, 23 videos, uh, end to end series about everything I learned about Blazor on my YouTube channel. Uh, go there, check it out. You know, everything I learned, everything I know about, uh, you're going to find it in there. I'm going to drop the link there as well, just for people who are uh, interested. And uh, yeah, reach out anytime. I'd be more than happy to kind of, you know, answer your questions and address any concerns you may have. Here's the series. Okay. Super. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and thank you very much, everyone, for, for joining. Absolutely. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Thank you.